Welcome back guys, Third Impact here with another episode review, this week's episode 9 of Kill La Kill. So, after last week, which is what I consider the first ever Kill La Kill cliffhanger, like real cliffhanger, they were totally milking the situation, building it up, we're about to get the action, Ryoko's transformed, they're ready to fight, and we are not given the action right away. They actually kind of make a joke about keeping the action from us for a little while. Which is kind of funny considering that's the exact thing that the last few episodes of South Park have kind of been emphasizing. This whole, oh it's coming, don't worry. So they hype up this huge fight. They have the first big cliffhanger in Kill La Kill. They come back. They recycle the animation of her transforming, kind of, which is like, okay, whatever, that's gonna happen. But then, they're ready to fight, ready to go, and Gamaguri is just like, sorry, um, we're gonna have to wait till 1pm when the fight officially starts. And me and my buddies that were watching it were just like, wanting to almost rip our hairs out, like, it was like, oh my god, are you serious? Like, you're gonna make such a blatant, like, joke about the fact that you're not gonna show us the action right away? Okay. So anyways, we'll we'll put up with this. So we're gonna have to wait till 1pm, hopefully this goes by pretty fast, because they're not gonna make the entire episode this sort of thing. We've seen her fighting Gamaguri in the preview, so we know it's coming, this isn't gonna take forever. So we see Mako's dad and brother, and... They're really excited about being able to watch the match because her brother has stolen this TV and they, he saved it for just this occasion and they're all going to be able to watch it. So it's like, alright. And they're all sitting down to watch it and nothing's happening. And then they find out that there are no parts inside of the TV and they've just been staring at an empty broken TV. Which was like another just funny way of them prolonging this, this weight game. Like... It's funny, but it's like, come on, come on. It's only funny because you want it to be over so badly and for them to get to the action. But they're just screwing around and just, like, totally messing with you. So, hats off to them for stalling, I guess. It was funny stalling, but, I mean, come on. Like, I, I sure, good for you. So, while Mako and Ryoko are killing time, they're just eating lunch when Mikisugi comes just up out of nowhere. They're mysterious teacher and it's really funny he puts one of his pins into Mako's head and she completely just freezes and then he explains to Ryoko how he thinks that she should back down from this king of the hill battle because what chance does she stand against all of these three stars one after the other I didn't really emphasize that either it's not just Gamaguri she's fighting after she beats him she's got to fight another one and another one and another one so this is just complete suicide I mean he has very logical points, like, what chance does she really think she has against these people? She's gotten no upgrades or anything since she got her ass beat by Sanagiyama, so if he's one of these four, maybe the, the strongest, maybe not. I think he is now, actually. I, I thought maybe that the other two might have been a bit stronger, but something happens um, a bit later that kind of makes me think that he is the strongest. But, like, she, she doesn't stand a chance, so... She's like, screw you, I'm doing it anyways, and she goes, and she's ready to fight. So the battle begins, and we finally see the awesome transformation sequence for Gamuguri's Shackle Regalia, which is really cool, and the fight starts off with Ryoku just walking up to him, and it's like, nothing's happening, and he's like, aren't you gonna fight me? And she's like, no, the only way that your power can activate is when you get attacked, which... Hey, good idea, right? Like, it's... But then, again, for another quick second, you're like, Oh my god, like, they're still doing this prolonging of no fighting. Like, we've finally gotten to this fight, it's finally happening now, and it's like, I'm not gonna fight you, because that's the smartest thing to do. It's like, oh my god. But, Gamaguri predicts that she's gonna do this, obviously, and he whips himself with his own whips and inflicts dam enough damage on himself to become Scourge Regalia and then fight back. So this is just a freaking mess of whips and a good portion of this episode is just Ryoko getting her ass beat by Gamaguri for a very long time. So during this fight, we are given another Gamaguri flashback and this one's very interesting. He's fighting Lady Satsuki, and she's younger. He's younger as well, but, I mean, 
the way that they portray them in these scenes, Gamorguri is like King Kong in comparison. Well, not quite, but at the end of it, they go to shake hands, and her entire hand only covers his finger. So there's been some size changing since then, or, you know, they were just doing it for effect, but it looked really cool in this flashback. So she goes to attack Gamorguri, and he has iron all over his body. His, he, his parents work in an iron shop, and he's decked himself out over his whole body. And his point is that he doesn't have the power to stop Lady Satsuki, but she doesn't have the power to break his armor either. So his deal is that he's just going to show his resolve in that he will never kneel before her and never bend to her will, and that even though he can't stop her, he's always going to be there to stand against her. But that doesn't really work, and as we saw in this fight, Lady Sasuke uses her signature um, sheath sword to the gut attack, which totally incapacitates Gamogori, knocks him out, but he does not kneel. He, he leverages himself on the sword, so he doesn't kneel, and Lady Satsuki respects this. So after Gamagori wakes up, Lady Satsuki respects his resolve and offers him a seat in her high council once she creates Honoji Academy in two years. But we also get a much more direct sort of confession of her philosophy and her goals. Because when she's explaining herself to Gamagori, she repeats her human are uh, pigs in human clothing line like she has many times but this time she follows it up with that she'll fight for everything she'll fight against sorry everything that this world stands for and that she's going to remake it so um we've kind of been under this impression that she's working towards her own goals using power to become higher in the world and that she doesn't necessarily like it but this speech very much made her seem to, you know, have her own ambitions. Where we see this world sort of as Lady Satsuki on top with Ryoko working her way up to it. We don't really know what the world was like before Lady Satsuki was on top. But apparently she wanted nothing to do with the way that things were. And whether she's achieved that with being where she is at the head of head now in Honoji Academy or this is just another step in her plan, is still yet to be seen. So, Ryoko can't land any hits on Gamuguri during this fight, and one of the main reasons she can't finish him off is that all of his life fibers are on the inside of his shackle and scourge regalia, not on the outside, so there's no way of her attacking them. Now, during this fight, Gamuguri tries to get to her by, you know, making fun of her for wearing what she's wearing and saying how she's such a disgrace and all this sort of thing. But then Ryoko's like, well, um, what about Lady Sasuke? She's doing the exact same thing, but why is she such an exception? And then, you know, he gives the, well, you know, she's different. Her iron will and well-trained body make her, you know, it's acceptable for her to be this way, but it's not acceptable for you to be this way. And, I don't know, it was kind of interesting. We've already seen that sort of line before, but it's still kind of an interesting point. I don't really know too much what we can relate it to in the real world, but I mean, it almost kind of made me think, like, if a woman is being seen as a you know, dressing like a slut or something along those lines, that if, you know, a celebrity or something was doing something similar, you know, oh no, that's an exception or that's all right, you know, that person is, you know, allowed to behave that way or do that sort of thing because, you know, they can pull it off or because they're in that position. But, you know, oh, if, if you're not able to pull it off or you're not around that position, you shouldn't be flaunting your body like that. So, I don't know, that, I'm probably reading it into a little bit too much, but, you know, that's what I got from that scene, a little bit at least. Just like I kind of felt that way back in episode 3 when she was, you know, justifying, her, showing her body in an utterly pure fashion. I don't know, I felt like it was kind of empowering, almost in a way, for women, and I don't know, I liked how they kind of continued that theme in this one as well. So, in the midst of this beating, Gamaguri goes to use one of the most funny attacks I have ever seen, and definitely the funniest attack I've seen in this show, because of, like, how serious this situation is. When she comes up, he turns his hands into molds of, like, the generic mushroom-cut sort of students, and he's like, this is the mold of an ideal, proper female school student, and I'm going to use this to mold you into the way that you should be, which was just like, 
what? Like, what? If this attack worked, would she actually have, like, completely changed? Would it have actually molded her? Like, I don't know. That was really funny, but she manages to disengage with, uh, Senkets. I don't know why I spaced on that name. Senkets. Or Senketsu. And, uh, she disengages with him and gets out of there. So, she gets out and then, uh, Senkets has a plan now, apparently. So, Ryoko might have something here. So, then Gamaguri um, fires his ultimate whip of love, which kind of appears to come flying out of his crotch sort of region. A nice, big, stiff whip just goes flying right at her. And even Mako makes a really funny scream sound and covers her ears when it happens. It's actually really funny. But Senkets catches it in his mouth, and they get pulled into the Shackled Regalia. So Ryoko is now inside of his suit, but he's crushing her in it. So it's like she's gotten close. She's right up there where the life fibers are, but she's still being crushed and can't do anything about it. But then, the freaking best part, um, they think she's screwed. Sanagiyama actually is like, no, I sense something. So this is what makes me think that he's kind of on top. He, it might just be the fact that he can see the whole world, but he notices that there's something up before um, the other two do. So there's that. But um, spikes start just bursting out of Gamaguri, and you're like, what's going on here? What's going on? That It's not just the blade. There's more than one. And she breaks out into this new power-up, Senket Senjin, and it's like, holy crap. It looks like a Mega Garchomp on crack, I swear to god. I'm gonna post a picture up there, and you tell me that she doesn't look like a Mega Garchomp on crack right now. She just has way too many spikes. She has spikes all up her, Wolverine spikes, more spikes in her hair, spikes coming off here. Too many spikes, but not too many spikes. It's great. It looks really awesome. So, good job on that power-up. She looks really sweet. So, I actually thought that was really cool. The rationale behind that was that the three-star uniforms can transform, so why wouldn't the Kamui be able to transform? And, you know, that's a good point. I never thought about that happening, but, yeah. I wonder if Lady Satsuki's is going to transform into spikes as well, or if hers is going to have a different sort of form. I'm sure it will, but... That's it's kind of cool to think about, and uh, it was also commented that it transformed to adapt to the situation, so she could have multiple transformations for her form still, like, I don't know if it gets stronger or if it just varies, but yeah, that's pretty cool. So, the fight ends, and Gamaguri's crushed. It's actually pretty dark. He pulls out the little short blade, and tries to commit seppuku on himself, which is the Japanese um, form of, like, carving out your innards uh, to kill yourself. And it's like, ooh, like, they're gonna do that, eh? Like, harsh. But Lady Sasuke shows up and she uses some fabric and catches his blade and is like, mm-mm, don't you do that. So he just passes out, but he's gonna be back. And Lady Satsuki even commented on the fact that, you know, his whole thing was resolve, but you can't stay focused on resolve, only resolve, because then you're going to be blind about other things and lose. Just like how Sonic Yama only relied on his eyesight, but he overcame that and came back stronger than ever. And if the preview is any indication, Gamaguri is still going to be back. He's going to be back in action, or at least around already next episode, which is cool. So, right after she wins, Inamuta, the... Um, strategy and tactics club leader, he's coming down for the next fight. So it's like, holy crap, like, bam, bam, bam. Like, we got Gamaguri, done. Next episode, Inamuta. And then once he's done, we're, we might get the musical um, club leader. Like, if it goes episode, episode, episode for these three, star nows, three stars now, that would be really cool. And I gotta say, when they were introducing Inamuta... His, I don't think it's his theme, but the song that was playing after she won, leading up to him coming down, was really awesome. Like, really freaky, dark, cool song. So, I noticed that was a new track, and it was really cool, so, awesome. So, all in all, I mean, there isn't a lot to say about this episode. It was just a good action episode. 
Ryoko got a cool new power-up, and she's going to be fighting the Tactics and Strategy Club leader next episode, apparently. So, it seems like they're really sort of ramping things up now at this point. And uh, I have a feeling that there's going to be this these little battles that are going on now, episode 10, and then 11, and then, you know, the halfway point, episode 12 or 13, you usually get a pretty crazy awesome episode, so... Either Lady Satsuki's going to come back into play, or something next above Lady Satsuki. I just, something's going to be happening in these next two or three episodes, so keep your eyes out for that. Keep your eyes open for new videos by me, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.